If, you, if you'd like to turn there, let me encourage you to do so. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. But before we dive right into the text, uh, I'll give you a little bit of context. Isaiah is prophet in Israel um, at a dark time, a dark time in Israel's future. They're about to be taken over by Babylon. Now, I know that some of us um, maybe have experienced dark times. I can tell you as an, as an NFL fan, it seems sometimes like you're going through a dark season when your Cowboys are losing season after season after season. But it seems like a great light has come now, right? But I'll tell you, it's, it's nothing compared, nothing compared to the dark season that Israel was going through when Isaiah was prophet. They were about to be taken over, demo- demolished, destroyed, and then, and then taken into slavery. Imagine your family being taken into slavery in distant lands across the Babylonian Empire. It's exactly what happened, and and Isaiah predicted that it would happen. But not only did he predict this dark time, he also predicted a time when God would deliver them from the darkness, when a great light would come into their life, and that's what we read today when we read in Isaiah uh, chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. Listen to what the prophet writes. But there will be no more gloom for her who was in anguish. In earlier times, he treated the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali with contempt. But later on, he shall make it glorious by the way of the sea, on the other side of the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. Those who live in a dark land, the light will shine on them. Now, the Israelites would have certainly known this to be true. They would have known it not only because the prophecy about them being destroyed and taken into captivity came true. It did. They were taken into captivity in Babylon. But, but they also th- thought, they thought that they saw the great light that Isaiah was talking about when a generation and a half after they'd been in slavery, a generation and a half later, um, the, king, uh, the Persian king Cyrus rose to power and he set the Israelites free. He let them go back to Jerusalem and began to rebuild their city and rebuild the temple. They thought this was the great light. This freedom that they experienced was the light that they'd been looking for. And because they thought that that was the light that they were looking for, they they fixated on it. And they thought about freedom as being the great light. They even thought that the coming Messiah was going to be a political Messiah who was going to establish freedom forever for Israel. And, and, and so many of the Jews, not all, but so many of the Jews at that time were so fixed on the light of freedom that they missed the great light when it came into the world in the person of Jesus Christ. And they were so fixed on that light of freedom that God eventually even took it away. Seventy years after Jesus' death and resurrection, it was the Romans who destroyed Israel. It was the Romans who destroyed the second temple. And, and the freedom that they thought was the great light All of a sudden, it was a light that just flickered out of their life. They were so focused on a a temporary light that they missed the great light which had come into the world in the person of Jesus Christ. I wonder, what's the great light in your life? I think that it's true, all all of us, maybe we haven't gone into slavery, but all of us go through times of of darkness, and I'd say that it's the condition of human beings, apart from the gospel. Apart from the gospel, humans walk in darkness, chasing after these these lights in our life, hoping that they might be the great light. So maybe for some of you, it's a house. You finally get in the house and you think, this is it. Getting in this home is going to be the light of our life. Or maybe it's a car that's going to answer all the problems. Maybe it's a career that you're in, and that's the light of your life, the career that that you've been waiting for, the promotion that you've been working at. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe that's the light in your life with a son or a daughter or a husband or a wife, boyfriend, girlfriend. You think this relationship is going to be the answer. It's going to be the light in my life. But anyone who's lived any length of time can tell you that, that all of these things fade. They flicker away. You know, the home ends up breaking down, cars need repair, it doesn't end up being the light that we thought it'd be. Our, our uh, careers, as great as they might be, everyone knows that at some point in time you retire, that career's over, then what? Maybe you get fired unexpectedly, then what? Even relationships, even the best ones, even the ones that don't break up for, um, f- for psychological, sociological reasons, even the best relationships end, why? Because we're mortal. And it's the nature of us that at some point we die and those relationships then are are gone. And that light in our life all of a sudden flickers away. What happens if we miss the great light 
because we're so focused on all these other lights. The, the light that the prophet Isaiah talks about here is the light that comes into the world in the person of Jesus Christ. And he wants to be that great light for you today too. It happens when you begin to push aside all the other lights and let him stand in the center of everything that you are and all that you do. And when he becomes the center and, and, and the great light in your life, something amazing happens. All of a sudden he begins to give life and light into all those other aspects, all the things, all the, all the jobs, all the careers, all the relationships, all of a sudden have a new and eternal significance. Even though they may come and go, they, they have a new beauty and a, and a hue of, of wonderful light to them, all because at the very center of our life is the light of Christ. The light that he brings offers us hope, peace, love, joy, the things we'll lift up today. They become the hallmarks and the pillars of those whose light is Christ. May this word be to the glory of God and the joy of his people. Amen.